Here we have an Acer Predator Helios 300 laptop that came in for repair. I have the laptop right in front of me right here. We did not disassemble the board. I thought, let me work on it like this if I'm able to figure it out quick. If not, then we're going to have to disassemble the board and see what's going on. Let's read what the customer wrote. I have not looked at this ticket yet, but we're going to read it together. Took the laptop which won't power up to Providence Computers in Chesapeake, Virginia, which diagnosed the problem as motherboard having a short. They recommended sending in the laptop to Northridge Fix. Thank you to the repair shop who referred the customer over. Hopefully, we can help out the customer. The first thing I want to do is check the DC connector. Let's go under the microscope and we can take it one step at a time. We have the DC connector right here. The flex cable is the DC connector right here. And the plug goes in from here. Now, I do have the charger right next to me. Let's plug in the charger because we cannot always go by what the customers say. We have to test it ourselves and see what's going on. Right now, I have the charger plugged in. And if we test the charger, meter in voltage mode, right here. And what do we have? We have 19.5 volts. The adapter itself may shut off when the cable is plugged in. And I was already told by Big Boss that the adapter went off when it was plugged into the computer. And that's a very good indication that we have a short circuit on the board. Look at this. As soon as the cable is plugged in, and that's the wrong adapter. I have the wrong adapter. Because I have five laptops right next to me that we need to fix. And we have the adapters labeled, so we're not going to lose which adapter is for which customer. But I picked the wrong adapter. I do not know how I'm able to process all those repairs at once. Let's go ahead and test this cable, this adapter. And we have 19 point, right here, 19 point 97 volts. Now, as soon as we plug the charging cable onto the laptop, we're going to remove the cable and measure again. And this time, we still have 19.97. It was not doing that before. The adapter went to zero because of a short circuit. Maybe when the laptop is turned on, or maybe when we attempt to power the laptop on, the charger will go into safety mode. Power on. Let's check and see. And we still have 19.97 volts. It doesn't matter. We measured it as a zero when the cable was plugged in, but it's not doing it now. To make sure we have the battery unplugged, and let's go under the microscope and start with the DC flex cable. The cable is right here, and that's where the charger plugs in. And what I want to do is look for any power MOSFETs in this area that we can measure for a short, but I cannot find any, so maybe we can measure at the fuse. Maybe the power MOSFETs somewhere on back of the board. But the board is still connected to the laptop, so we're not going to remove the board right now. We can measure at the fuse. If we go to diode mode, first, let's make sure the fuse is good. It's continuous. Yes, continuous. And if we measure for a short, red probe on ground and black probe here. And look at this. We have a short. We have a short circuit. You should never have a short on a fuse. Never. Fuse should not short to ground. It should short to itself, but not to ground. Like this is okay, but shorting to ground is not good. We gonna inject voltage at the fuse and monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot on the board. And like I always mention, we want to work smart and not hard. We cannot afford to spend a lot of time, a lot of hours working on one specific laptop. Somebody out there may have that luxury of time to do so, but we work in a smart way. We try to narrow down the problem. If we see light at the end of the tunnel, we continue and we fix the laptop. If not, then we troubleshoot in a quick manner. And if we cannot find the culprit, we deem it a no fix. 
that's how we are able to get to hundreds and hundreds of tickets that we have in the shop here. Right now, I have about five laptops that we need to get done. I fixed two Asus laptops today, but I posted an Asus laptop yesterday, so I do not want to keep boring you with the Asus laptops. Maybe I'll post every once in a while, but not every day. Or maybe I'll do it every day. It doesn't matter. When we are working on a laptop, we do not know if that laptop is going to have a similar issue to the one I worked on previously. So everything is done in real time. Right now, I have not looked at this laptop. I have not looked at what the customer wrote. So everything is being done as I work on it. The only thing I know is that Big Boss said when he plugged in the charging cable, the adapter went into protection mode and it was not outputting any voltage. But I was not able to see that here. Anyway. We have a short at the fuse. Let's go ahead and inject voltage at the fuse and see if we see anything hot on the board. One, two, and three. Right there, right there, you see? Look here. Watch. One, two, and three. See? Right here, right here. Thank you very much, thermal camera. We do not need your services anymore. And we're gonna switch over to the microscope, right here. So, <laughs> a DR MOS, the ON 302045. A very popular DR MOS. And right now, we have one of the two options. Either the DR MOS is bad or the CPU is gone. I have worked on many Dell Alienwares where replacing the DR MOS does not fix the problem because of a faulty CPU. The CPU receives higher voltage than what it can handle and it goes bad. Hopefully it's different here. On Asus laptops, it's different. We change the MOSFET, everything goes back to normal, but we'll see. So this one is the ON302045. I think we sell that chip on our site. And this one is different than the SIC638, which is found on Dell Alienwares, or the SIC632 found on Asus laptops. They have a difference between pin 30 and 31, output disable and thermal warning. But we'll check, we'll see. If we have it installed, great. If not, then we're gonna have to look at other motherboards to get that chip. I do not know which board we're gonna find for that chip. I'm almost positive we sell that chip on our site. Let me remove it first, make sure the short is gone. And I smell burn, it smells like fireworks. Wow, I do not have my fume extractor on, so let's put it on right now. We did not disassemble the board from the housing, so we have to be careful. We do not want to burn any plastic and we do not want to damage anything on the laptop. Smells like firework. Let's maybe manually cool down the area. Because I always mention it, if the board is hot, you may get the wrong reading when measuring. So just cool it down a bit. An ear swab with alcohol is not gonna do much, but it will help with the cooling process. We're gonna go back here and see if we still have a short. Do we still have a short? Wow, the short is gone. I'm currently reading 0.3. 0 0.314 and the number is going to keep going up until it reaches probably 0 0.4 0 0.42 but because the board is boiling hot we're going to get the wrong reading or a lower reading right now it's 0 0.327 here let me show you when the board is hot you're going to get a lower reading but as the board cools down then you will start to get the proper reading 0.3 is good, we do not have a short anymore, but 
keep monitoring. Look at this. 0 0.338, 0 0.339, 0 0.340, 41. It's going to keep going up until it reaches 0 0.4 something. But we do not have a short. We do not have a zero. We have 0 0.34. Awesome. The short is gone. All we have to do is replace the chip and hope for the best. I just want to quickly go to our site and check on that chip. We're going to search for NCP. Okay, so let's search for NCP. Do we have it? Do we have it? This one is 302045. Yes, we do sell that chip. And if you click on it, you'll be able to purchase at the car checkout purchase. And you can also buy everything that you need from our site. We are a distributor of the Flux, original Amtac Flux. You can buy hot air stations, soldering station, Braidwick, the new microscope that we received last week, red color, and looks amazing. Fume extractor, you definitely need one. Anti-glare light, grinding pan, solder mask, charging stations, needle probes, a lot of things. Most of you are already customers, but for all new viewers, you can purchase all your needs from our site. Everything that we use on the bench here, we carry and sell on our site, and all items have been tested. So buy with your eyes closed. Add to cart, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. All right, so I paused the video and I grabbed a chip and I lost it. What happens is anytime I pause the video, I start to have questions from my dad, from Big Boss, from everybody in the shop. They wait until I pause so they can ask the questions and I put the chip on the bench here only two seconds ago and it's gone right there I got it I got it 30 20 45 awesome and usually I do not like to work with this tweezer when handling big components because the tip may get damaged quick this one is the NF-B it's such an amazing tweezer very precise but you can tell I've used this tweezer a lot and probably dropped it also but one of the finest tweezers that we have in the shop here. Do not use this tweezer for big components. Do not use it to poke stuff. You can use something like this for big components. We have a lot of different tweezers in the shop. But this one I use when working with 0.1 millimeter wires, 105 SMD components, 201 SMD components, all the microscopic stuff. So let's grab the chip and we can prep the pads. I can solder the chip directly without prepping the pads. That can work, but leaded solder is a lot easier to work with and we want to make sure all the pins on the MOSFET make any good connection. So no Mickey Mouse work here. We work smart and not hard, but we do not take shortcuts. I work on a device like I'm working on it for myself, like it's my device. I never take shortcuts. And you see how we have a lot of glare? That's why I always tell viewers and people who are doing this as a business or as a hobby to buy the anti-glare light. Very, very important. Look at this, we got rid of the glare and everything is visible. Flux is your friend, always. This cap is bothering me, it's very close. All right, and we're good. Where is pin number one? The chip should be oriented like this. And now we can turn on our ring light along with the anti-glare light for better visibility. We do not care about the glare anymore because the glare is under the chip.
and the chip went in place very nice now all we have to do is press and hold and we're gonna squeeze the guts out of that chip just like that and all we need to do is this And this. What we can do also is I can remove the cap just to make sure that all the pins on the right side are good. Remove it and put it right here. And now we have more control over working on this area. Awesome. Now we're gonna solder that cap right back. Or we can use our hot tweezers, it does not matter. Very nice, we're done. Better than factory, right? Let's measure at the fuse again, make sure we do not have a short, then I can hand this to Big Boss to reassemble and test, and hope for the best. And we are reading right now 0 0.312, because the board is hot, and like I said, the number will go up to 0 0.4. Let me give the board to Big Boss. I'll be back. Big Boss. Just reassemble the fence because everything, like I said, is already assembled. We did not remove the motherboard of the housing, but you just removed the fence. Keyboard backlight is on. And the fans are not spinning so far. But that's normal for some laptops. The keyboard backlight is still on. And the laptop is taking a charge. We can tell by the orange light here. Keyboard backlight is still on. Let me turn the light off so you can see it. What's going on? It went back off. Okay, so right now we may deem this as a CPU fault. I'm gonna do one final inspection. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we're gonna deem it a no fix. The mailman just came in and he went straight to the room. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.